So, we will continue from where we left off as I promised. So, we were looking at uh, linear regression and uh, we looked at uh, subset selection and then we looked at uh, shrinkage methods and then finally, we came to derived directions right. I said there are three classes of methods right. So, we are looking at a couple of uh, examples of each of those classes of methods. The first one we looked at was subset selection. So, we looked at forward backward selection and stage wise selection, step wise selection and all that and then we looked at shrinkage methods where we looked at ridge regression and lasso. And then we st look started looking at derived directions, right? Where we looked at principal component regression. I said the next one we look at is partial least squares, and I gave you the motivation for looking at partial least squares. It's mainly because principal component regression only looks at the input data, okay? Does not pay attention to the the output, right? And therefore, you might uh, sometimes come up with uh, really counterintuitive directions. Uh, like in the example, I showed you with the plus and minus 1 outputs, okay. So, the basic idea here is that we are going to use the y also, right. Uh, just like the usual case, I am going to assume that y is centered, right. And I am also going to assume that the inputs are standardized. Okay, this is something which you have to do for both uh, PCA and uh, uh, partial least squares. Essentially, you assume that the each column, right, is going to have zero mean unit variance, right? On the data that is given to you, you make it zero mean unit variance so that you are not having any magnitude-related uh, effects on the um, on the output. Okay. So, what I am going to do is the following, if you remember uh, how we did uh, orthogonalization earlier, something very similar. So, I am going to look at okay. right. So, I am going to look at uh, the projection of y on x j, right. Then I am going to create a derived direction okay, which essentially sums up all of these projections, right? I have I have computed. Basically, I am computing the projection of y on xj, right? So, this is essentially the direction, this is, is the vectorized uh, version of it. I am going to sum all of this up. So, essentially what I am doing here is I am looking at each variable in turn. I take each x j in turn, okay, I am seeing what is the effect on y. Right. So, how much of y I am able to explain just by taking x j alone right. and I am using all of that, I am combining that and making that as my single direction. So, individually taking each one of this all by itself. Okay, individually taking each direction by itself, how much of y can I explain? Okay, and that becomes my first derived direction. That's my z1. Okay. So that's the coefficient for z1 in my regression fit, eventual regression fit, okay, that is a coefficient for z1. You can see what it is, right. So, I have taken y and regressed it on z1 and that essentially gives me what the coefficient for z1, right. So, how do I go on to find? Okay. So, I am looking at how much of y is along each direction xj, right. So, in some sense you can think of it as if I have one variable xj, right, how much of y can I ex explain with that one variable xj, okay. So, I am looking at that and then my first direction z1 is essentially summing that univariate contributions over all my input directions, right. Suppose I have two input directions. Uh, 
fortunately I have to do this in 3D. Suppose I have two input directions, so what I am going to do is I am going to take my y right, so project it on x1 alone first right, project it on x1 alone and on x2 alone right, let me redo that, let make it easier. It is a little tricky to do this in 3D, but uh, anyway, right? No, it is going to be hard to do it on the board pictorially for you, okay. I am not going to do that. No, I really need to get a, I actually have to plot a function y, right. I cannot just do it with single data points y, that does not make sense. So, I actually have to get you a surface y on x, x1, x2, and then talk about the projection. So, that is going to be hard, right. But the basic idea is I take y, right. I find the projection of y along x1, okay. Then I find the projection of y along x2, okay. Now, I am going to take the sum of these two. Okay, and whatever is the resulting direction that I am going to use that as my first direction. Okay. How is it different from PCR? PCR projecting on each of the eigen uh, Yeah, so in PCR, in, in, uh, PCR what we did was we first found directions in x which had the highest variance. Here we are not finding directions in x with the highest variance, but we are finding directions in x, right, some, in some sense a components of x which are more in the direction of the output variable y, right. So, eventually you can show that which we are not going to do, but you can show that the directions you pick the z1, z2, z3 that you pick or those which have high variance in the input space, but also have a high correlation with y, right. So, it is actually an objective function which tries to balance correlation with y and variance in the input space. While PCA does only variance, PCR does only variance in the input space, does not worry about the correlation, but partial least squares you can show that it actually worries about the correlation as well, right. So, if you find the first coordinate, now what you do, you orthogonalize. So, what should I do now? I should regress x1. So, what should I be doing now? I should regress x1 like xj on z1, right. This is how we did the orthogonalization earlier, right. So, you find one direction, okay, then you regress everything else on that direction, then subtract from it that gives you the orthogonal direction. Right. So, essentially that is what you are doing here, the expressions look big, but right. the expressions look big, but then you know if you have been following the material from the previous classes then it is essentially we are just reusing the uh, univariate regression construction we had earlier right. So, now I have a new set of directions which I call x j 2 right x j 1 was the original x j s I start off with right now I have a new set of directions which we will call x j 2 and then I can keep repeating the whole process right. I can take y project it along x j 2 right and then combine that and get z2 and then regress y on, on z2 to get theta2 right. So, I can keep doing this until I get as many directions as I want right. <coughs> 
So what is the, the nice thing about the Z1, Z2 and other things? They themselves will be orthogonal because they are being constructed by individual vectors which are orthogonal with respect to the all the previous Zs that we have. Right? Each one will be orthogonal and therefore I can essentially do univariate regression. So I do not have to worry about accommodating the previous variables. So when I, when I want to fit a Zk, I can just do a univariate regression of Y on Zk and I will get the coordinates theta k. Okay? Is that fine? Great. So once I get this theta 1 to theta k, how do I use it for prediction? Can I just do like x beta, like I do x beta, can I do x theta? Huh? Can I? No. What should I do? Well, I can do z x z. I mean, I mean, I mean I'm sorry, uh, theta uh, theta z, right? I can do theta z and predict it. But then I don't really want to construct this uh, z directions for every vector that I'm going to get. So I don't want to project it along those uh, z directions. So instead of that, what I can do, if you think about it, each of those z's is actually composed of the original variables x, right? So I can compute the thetas. And then I can just go back and derive coefficients for the x's directly because all of these are linear computations. I, all I need to do is essentially figure out how I am going to stack all the thetas so that I can derive the coefficients for the x's. Okay, think about it. Okay, I can do it as a short exercise, but I can eventually come up and write. So where I can de derive these coefficients beta hat from these thetas, right? So I'll, I'll derive theta one, theta two, theta three, so on and so forth. I can just go back and do this computation. So you'll have to think about it. Very easy. You can work it out and figure out what the number should be, right? And what is the m doing there? The number of di directions I actually derived, right? So number of directions I derived from the PLS. Right, so here I have the first direction. I can keep going. Suppose I derive p directions. <coughs> what can you tell me about the fit for the uh, uh, data? If I get p PLS directions, it essentially means that I'll get as good a fit as the original least squares fit. Right, so I, I essentially get the same fit as the least squares fit. Okay, so anything lesser than that is going to give me something different from the least squares fit. Okay, here's a thought question: If my x were originally orthogonal to begin with, my x were actually orthogonal to begin with, okay, what will happen with the PLS? Sorry. Our z's will be the same as our x's. Z will, will be, the be the same as our z's. Z will be the same as our x's, right? And what will happen to z2? Can I do the z2? No, right? PLS will stop after one step because there will be no residuals after that, right? So I will essentially get my least squares fit in the first attempt itself, okay? So that is essentially what will happen, right? So we will stop with uh, regression methods. Thank you.